Okay. Are you ready? Okay. Listen to this first, though. Okay, you ready? So you heard that song, it'll make sense to you in a minute. And this one, whoops, after the advertisement. This one is Bobby Brown. Oh, I'm such a tease sometimes. Um, so, the reason that um, I played those was because uh, the three kitties, cats, cats, that were returned was all named their names always made me think of those songs one is Dominic he came he was adopted by himself and the other one is um, Mick Splish and Mick Splash and let me get their records and then I can come right back with you okay hang on knew about these returns um, Dominic actually came back here on the 31st so this is his third day back with us um, the reason that he was returned is because she is elderly and cannot take care she needs help taking care of herself so she's going into assisted living and cannot take her take Dominic with her so Dominic originally came here April 22, 16. His birthday is April 1, 16, so he was only uh, three weeks old when he arrived. And um, he was, what was he, like nine, ten ounces. He was a baby, a baby, baby, baby. And uh, his mama had left this baby, um, I don't remember now if it was a porch or a, or a, a yard, but the family where he was at um, brought him here to FFRC. So he had everything done here. He was adopted then on um, September 8th. So he was here <clears throat> for like four months before he was adopted. So Dominic is, uh, when he left here, he was six pounds <coughs> when he he just re was returned like I said on the 31st that's Monday he was 11 pounds 10 ounces so he, he's a big boy 11 pounds 10 ounces and you know I've said this over and over and over again 
that when these kitties come here, some of these kitties, um, like Cohen, for example, where things have been hard for him, for a lot of these kitties when they come in, they're going from uh, a hard place into a nice place here. So that adjustment period of coming in here is pretty easy and it's pretty quick. And normally, um, it, it's pretty smooth. It, it is a very hard decision. She's already called a couple times to check on Dominic. So he's, he's a little bit off and um, I know he's got it in him to adjust. And the good thing is today, Dominic uh, was ready to go into the welcome room. So he's in the welcome room now on a Coronda Tower. And the really awesome news is now when I go in there and talk baby talk to him, kitty talk, he comes over to me and wants his head and his back rubbed and scratched and he raises his tail now. So he will be up here pretty soon, I think. He's doing much better. He's got a little bummed up nose um, and that's from um, when he was in the cage. He kept rubbing his face on the, on the metal. So he's got a little, little red nose there. So these other two kitties are kind of the same situation, but they had a mom and a dad. They were adopted in, um, these are my old, old, old records. They were adopted on uh, November thir 2013. And um, these guys are Mixed Blish and Mixed Splash. Mixed Splash is gray and white. Mixed Blish is black and white. They're brothers, brother, sister. Mixed Splash is the male. Mixed Blish is the female. They were born August 11, 2013. So they were just like three months old when they were adopted. They, they were, they did get them declawed. Um, and I know this vet clinic, they did a good job on it. So these guys, <laughs> I knew they were coming. Um, yeah, yeah, Nance. I knew they were coming, but today I started getting all these um, emails from this vet office that has been their vet all these years and I couldn't figure out why because I didn't recognize uh, the owner's name at that time and when the three daughters, adult daughters brought the McSplish and Splash um, they said that the vet office was sending their records so that's what that was all about so uh, when I get done here I'm going to pull those off but they've been well well vetted um, taken very good care so this is a their mom and dad, and I think she said they're 81 and 83 years old. They will be, in a couple weeks, going to assisted living, a very nice place in um, Archibald. And so we've got a connection there already with someone that works there, so I can pass my pictures that I take of the two to um, this friend of ours that works there. and they will, the, the couple then will be able to see the kitties here, so that will be nice. The three, three daughters that came, sisters, um, they said that these two are friends, but they're not a bonded pair, so they said we don't have to worry about making sure they go in the same home. So when Mix Lish, the female black and white, left, um, she was a little over two pounds. She is now eight pounds, three ounces. No, they're not bonded, Packer. That was one of the first things I asked. Um, they're not bonded. She said they really are okay. They would be okay separated. And then we have Mix Blash, who when he left here, he was probably, what would that be, two... 213 somewhere in there and today he weighs a whole lot he weighs 21 pounds and 7 ounces so almost 21 and a half ounces or 21 and a half pounds he will lose some weight here I know he will because um, he will be busier here now McSplish and McSplash 
are already um, feeling pretty good. They they are um, already. I can't put them in a care. I can't put them in a condo because I want them to be together right now while they're acclimating. And so they're just loose in the front thumpers room. And um, Mick Splash, he lays on uh, the the top shelf in there with his shoulders over and his legs hanging down and his roundness. And here, do you want me to put that up there? Can you? Uh huh. Come on. So. Come on, Iota. Come on. That's my breakfast call. Come on, Iota. So um, he was ever so cute. But I'll get pictures of them. Um, yeah, that's what I told. That's what I told his. His well, that would be his aunt. Aunts that uh, he was going to have to do some laps on that wheel there, Slee. Yeah, him's a big boy. Twenty-one and a half pounds. Twenty-one point oh seven. So he will lose weight. I know. I just know he will. So that's our three newbies, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if by the end of the week, well wait, today's Wednesday, well I hope they're up here comfortably by Saturday morning because um, we are always busy with surgery in the front and back thumpers room. Yeah. Gee gee, I don't think Magic wants you to nurse on him, gee gee, come on. All right, that's all I got. We did, I just had to run out. We had a, our uh, tree service people came. Um, I told them that we have a problem and, and I think I put it in the blog and I did not get time to do a blog today. Um, I told him he's the one who helped us with the cottonwood trees. I told him that boom, boom, did, yes. He's, she is well over. She's, she's going to be fine. I told him that um, the crab apple tree, though it comes up in two big, big trunks, one of them was starting to lean inwards, and it's right smack over the house that Jonah built and the Colby Haven. I mean, it's if it if it fell, it would. Oh my! It would so wipe out the house that Jonah built. I mean, it's big, and um, the. Colby Haven and also the storage room, the storage shed out there, it's, it's hanging over all of that. So he said when I said a crab apple tree, he was thinking I really meant maples, but I know my trees. And um, he said he's just never seen a crab apple tree that big. So this thing is so dangerously over that um, tree, or the house that Jonah built, that they can't their tree climber that they had for our massive cottonwoods, he's down in New Orleans helping with cl tree cleanup and won't be in for a while. So he's going to have to bring his um, um, his uh, bucket truck. And to get that in there, we have to take down one section of that fence, which is going to make a, me a nervous wreck next Thursday. So I'm going to talk to our volunteers, see if we can get a couple of them down there just kind of hanging out with the cats all day. but. They, I told them that this, I know the tree has to go because I cannot have that, those buildings damaged, but we cannot have those cats get out. So we figured out one section, there's a, a boulder there, but he said he can move that with his, uh, his scoop. And then we'll slice it down and then we will have to pull the stakes out on the bottom. We'll just fold that over. And then the truck goes in, that comes back, and he's going to bring some um, connectors, and we'll connect that back. He said, you cannot leave that open. No, 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 it has to be done each and every time. So he said, once a bucket truck is in there, then they'll be in there for a while until the tree is down, and they start hauling out. So then we'll um, clip those connectors and open up that fence again, get the truck out, and then will permanently hook that together again and then get the stakes back in. There's just no other way to do it. I was afraid he was going to say that. It's just, there's just no way. The woods is back there. There's only like three feet section there. Truck can't get in there. Um, the sides, this thing is like right smack dab in the middle of the playground, so it's impossible to get um, 
to reach in and get it. There's just no way. So next Thursday, going to be a little, um, little uh, nerve-wracking for me and everybody, I guess. This is my possum, stay possum shirt, and I think I have something on that. We sold these a year or two ago. Okay. Nanny <laughs> across the cove. I know, it's kind of scary. But um, they're extremely respectful of what we do here. And they know how important these cats are to us. So, um, And he said he'll bring extra guys to help manage all this too. And I said, well, you can bring extra guys, but I'm bringing some volunteers. <laughs> we will be very careful. And I think once that machine sound comes up, um, most of them is going to go clear to the, if you know how that playground is, clear to the left or in the cove or in the house that Jonah built. Yeah, so, okay, that's next Thursday. All right, I got to go take care of those kitties and then get back on the emails. Thank you for getting your um, payments in for the flash sale already. They're already starting to um, pack up some of the things. So... Is nothing on the back? Oh, nothing is on the back, okay. <laughs> I get I get mixed up. I just pull out a shirt in the mornings. <laughs> All right.